What's up, what a crypto muscle coming to you with another YouTube video. So here we are, it's crypto muscle. Hell yeah, pumping on and pumping crypto and crypto muscle network. I know, don't adjust your dial. It is two different channels, right? The OG channel came back and then the collision course with, of course, the current channel. And so, one big happy family reunited all over again. That's what it's about. Crypto Muscle and the Crypto Muscle Network. And so, with that, I got some plans for this. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, I'm going to do a video to kind of talk about what my plans are in terms of direction with both channels. But they're still going to be together, just going in a uh parallel direction yeah but i'm going to talk about that more uh on monday more in depth on that all right and, and the plans for that and it's a better way to go and so with that uh let's talk about the crypto news all right? i haven't talked about news in a little bit I mean, it's just a lot of platforms i've been talking about and so uh you know i thought i would kind of change it up a little bit and the crypto news will be part of the, of the uh, OG channel here as I'll be covering crypto news here on this channel to look and the plan for this channel is to go along with the legacies uh, platforms of the you know just like I did with the past and pretty much just a channel uh, uh, just squashing platforms and things like that it all depends though you know it, I do what I do for a reason all right and then the crypto muscle network will be pretty much about mid-levels and high yield platforms and all that so you know one big happy flam you know family all right get to it now uh paxos will engage with sec staff on this issue and we we'll, are prepared to vigorously litigate if necessary all right talking about um this whole staking issue and all that uh that's been a big deal these last couple of weeks um uh, trying to see what else is drawing sec considers rules that could threaten crypto custody services man sec has been like all of a sudden man jumping all over crypto uh tornado cash devs criminal case in europe may hinge on laptop access Ooh, let's see judge clears celsius to plan to sell Bitmain mining coupons worth over $7 million. All right. And we already talked about this in uh, my last update. Uh, Hong Kong will officially make crypto purchasing, selling, and trading fully legal. And China's backing all this. So Hong Kong is, kind of, is part of China, but they have a separate government as long as they acknowledge the motherland China. Uh, Hong Kong is kind of a freer society within china and china's backing hong kong in terms of this whole idea with crypto pretty interesting mount gox two largest creditors pick payouts option that won't force bitcoin sell off what i want the bitcoin sell off that's insane let me see what's going on over here i want the bitcoin sell off what are they talking about here uh the early lump sum payment they picked is set to be paid out in September. The option to wait until all Mt. Gox litigation settled could net higher payouts, but may take another five to nine years. Oh man, that is yeah, way too long. So the biggest creditors of Mt. Gox, the crypto exchange that failed to do to a hack nine years ago, have liked to get their bankruptcy recovery paid out mostly in Bitcoin. Well, yeah, we know that. Um, Defunct New Zealand-based crypto exchange, Bitcoin, Bitcoinica, and Mt. Gox Investment Funds. Uh, let's see. Result will get paid 90% of their collectible funds. And oh, so the price of BTC jumped after Coindesk reported this development. Okay, so the idea that, um, let's see. Uh... All right, let me go back here. Maybe I, maybe I read too far ahead. So their decision to pick the former option could soothe 
uh, fears among Bitcoin holders that a wave of simultaneous liquidations tied to the bankruptcy could drive down the price of Bitcoin. That's what I wanted to happen. Um, let's see. So because of that, Bitcoin shot up in price because of good news. Uh, creditors who do choose to wait may have to hold tight for a while. Litigation surrounding uh, this whole thing. Okay, so basically um, they're talking about maximizing as much money given back to the people as soon as, you know, and it, and it could take longer because it's supposed to happen this year, but because they still want to fight this thing out in litigation you know, and trying to get full money pay back to the you know people all right it could take more years for that to happen so it's kind of like delaying mount gox all right we were waiting for this black swan event to happen all right because we wanted to drive down bitcoin prices <laughs> hey you never know what's going to happen here so um some people want to opt for the mount gox bird in hand payout so if creditors don't want to take the early lump sum at 90%, the only other option is to wait till the end of the litigation. All right, so uh, they have till March 10th, creditors to decide whether to take the offer early lump sum or keep waiting for a larger payout. Man, I think people waited long enough, but hey, whatever it is, they teach his own. Uh, SEC poises sue company behind failed Terra USD stablecoin charges Doquan with fraud. Well, shouldn't all these companies that did this whole sort of, uh, what do they call that, the um, algorithmic stablecoin stuff that all these other exchanges were doing and play the volatility and then the volatility played them back and screwed everybody over? Uh, you're going to be hitting everybody up then. He can't be the only one. So Japan will launch pilot for issuing digital yen. Doquan tapped hoard of 10,000 Bitcoin and turned them into cash via Swiss bank. Damn, 10,000 Bitcoins. I would love to have that. Uh, MicroStrategy has raised $46 million through share sales since September. Michael Strategy is one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. Uh, Binance considers pulling back from U.S. Will consider delisting tokens from any U.S.-based project, including USDC. Why? Whereas Binance.us has no plans to leave. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Um, Binance CEO reports about considering delisting all U.S.-based cryptocurrencies is false. It's just too much bullshit going on right now. It's just stupid. Uh, this, is, this is the bullshit that goes on. And that's why you don't like it when you have government getting involved in crypto. Crypto hedge fund Galloy Capital uh, shuts after half its assets trapped on FTX. Yeah. I know. It's just uh, unfortunate. I never really... I, I'll be honest. I never heard of FTX until I see more commercials about it more recently. And then the crash happened. Um, so that shows you how much I really mess with exchange. I really don't. I, I, I mess around with other stuff. Not really exchange related. So... Um, yeah, it's just funny how that is. Hubie Global has announced that it's applying for a crypto trade license in Hong Kong. Yeah, man. Hong Kong is a hot market now. You know, new entry of messing around with crypto that's going to be a whole tap in of new people to buy so everybody wants to tap into that that's why you know they jumped in quick so let's see here what else we got uh the crypto exchange zipmex does restart customer which all after closing takeover deal all right ftx japan to resume crypto and fiat withdrawals on February 21st, all right. Uh, part of this too is just catch it up on some of the news here uh, that we haven't been able to talk about. Coinbase and talks to create a federally regulated crypto exchange. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? The liquidity gap left by the collapse of FTX and Alameda, which we dubbed the Alameda Gap, has persisted in February 
with BTC market depth still below its November levels. Uh, New York Sioux's coin exchange here says cryptocurrency exchange failed to register with the state. Man, people, what is going on around here? Forsage founders indicted in 340 million first charge criminal fraud case involved a DeFi Ponzi scheme. Wow. Check, check this thing out. Oh, well, that comes up. Uh, wow, so Forsage founders, huh? Indicted. That's very interesting. Uh, I'm going to tap on that. There we go. So I wonder if that... In so it does include Lado. So how is he running that platform if he's indicted? Because he's running this forced bullshit platform. Let me look that up now, all right? Uh, it's called Force. Yeah, so who's running this shit? If, see, he's right here. This is that Lado guy. And there's there's been a lot of bullshit stuff going on with this uh, platform. And um, yeah, he's just bringing in a bunch of crap. I haven't covered this in a while. I would have to kind of catch up on what's been going on with Force. But you guys, if you watch my videos on what happened with Forsage and how Force came about. And then there was some other platform called Express Money or something like that. That came out, and that was based on Lado. This guy came out with Force, and then Ola this Lola Ferrari, uh, M this Miguel Sergeev, Glebe, whatever. Sir one of these guys, Sergey. There's two others. All right, one of those two others came out with this other platform called Express Money, and they supposedly had this spat with each other that. You know, one decided to go, you know, against, I guess two of them decided to go against Lado and kind of like, I don't know, screwed him over on some stuff. Lado said, all right, I, I don't want to deal with this bullshit no more. And supposedly they, that's what kind of ended Forsage, even though they just ran out of people to join because it was probably one of the largest type of like matrix style platform at the, at this time. And they ran out of people to join because there's only so much people that could join. And there's so many new smart contracts you could create out of this whole matrix style idea. You went from ETH to uh, Binance Smart Chain. And then I think there was like a Polygon and things like that. You run out of time and people, right? And so they had this supposed spat. I believe it's staged, all right? And... They did. They went off with this express money, two of them uh, partners, and then Lado went with this force crap. And um, yes, yeah, so all this has happened now. So if they're indicted, all right, then how's Lado running that force platform? So that's what I don't get here. Uh, let's see here. So 340 million. Wow, it's a lot. So trying to see what's going on with these people uh let's see so 80 percent of forsage investors receive fewer eth back than they had invested in forsage ethereum programs so that was the first contract and then 50 percent of investors never received a single payout wow and let's see forsage accounts known as x gold um, all right, so whatever. Point of it is that I don't know how they're still running this stuff. Each are charged with conspiracy. If convicted, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Um, but doesn't sound like they're even locked up right now. So I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, we'll see what happens with these uh, people here with that bullshit force platform. If maybe they go out now and all that stuff so it's all kind of unclear right now what's up with all that but yeah pretty uh crazy how that is and um yeah i just don't get how he's still running that force bullshit right here this this platform here if he supposedly indicted right so oh we'll see what happens this is the latest news and update we'll have to catch up again some more later on this week 
comment down below and uh, let me know what you think about all this stuff and i'll see you in the next one